the heat is easier than the cold. You're going to find yourself friends with the heat pretty quickly. It might take a session or two. Most states don't have a very defined bathhouse or cold plunge. Uh, they don't have guidelines around it. What we're worried about is that as this becomes more prevalent and people start to want to start their own locations, they'll start locations with equipment that isn't up to the task of being able to keep um, the water clean and, and sanitary. <laughs> Guess who's coming to sauna? Hekilunta. Guess who's coming to sauna? Hekilunta. Hello, all. My name is Aero with the Upper Bench, and uh, I may sound funnier than I normally do because I've had COVID for the first time. I was dodging the bullet for almost four years, but then I got it, and it's been going on like 11, 12 days already, but I'm getting better. The interesting thing is that that during the holiday, I've as always I've been contact con contacted by a lot of people, and there are a lot of people are interested in sauna. And uh, but one thing which is more clear than ever is most of the people I talk to are so called what we call the one and done folks. So they are missing the fun, and uh, and uh, you know we are here to maybe hope that people go go would go back into the hot room and really enjoy their saunas, which I'm going to do for the first time post-pandemic this evening. This is my sauna evening. So what about Sam? What about you? What's going on? No, doing well, Errol. Thanks. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. You know, it seems like everybody I talked to in the last month over the holidays, Christmas break or, or New Year's break or holiday break, has gotten something, either COVID or the flu or RSV or, or a million different things. So I'm glad everybody here is upright, breathing, and we're all chatting sauna. So, you know, it, this is, it's good to be here. But yeah, that make sure you guys are, are taking care of yourselves out there. Wash your hands once in a while um, and, uh, you know, cover your mouth when you're coughing and sneezing. But, you know, for me in 2024, my goal, um, you know, if we're going to talk resolutions or anything like that, my goal is to hit about that 200 mark um, on sauna sessions for the year. So right now I, um, I'm on track and I'm about, I, it's the 11th, uh, we're recording this on the 11th and I'm about seven saunas into the year already. So um, I, I'm, you know, if I hold this track, should be just fine. But I know there's going to be some vacations and some time where, hey, it just doesn't get done. But um, I usually go about three to five times a week right now, and it's it's been great. But um, Risto, how's the new year treating you? Uh, pretty good. Um, we were sounding maybe about once a week. Uh, we we're supposed to have some friends over this Saturday, um, some former students of mine. I used to be a teacher. And uh, so they're really interested in sauna. They're using a public sauna up in Minneapolis. Uh, they even became members. So that's pretty exciting. But they want to come and, and use our sauna and see how we do it. Um, but his wife just got sick, like you guys are talking about. So we may be on hold for that. Yeah. But uh, so who do we have with us today? What are we talking about? Well, um, we have some sauna friends of mine, Sean and Lauren Foster. And um, it's kind of a, a long and windy story as to how we got connected. But the topic for this week's episode is going to be sauna in Utah. So we're going to kind of have that state focus. Um, and I met Sean and Lauren through, um, I think just maybe I was Google searching about sauna in Utah. And I'll tell you why a little bit later. And... Um, and I had some friends that were out in Utah, and I saw that there was a public sauna in Utah. So I was looking into that. And then one of my friends said that they had used it. And so, I, and I heard a good report. And so then I reached out to them and we got connected. And then we actually met each other at the sauna festival thing in Duluth. Um, when was that? It was a few months back. Uh, it was in March. No, it was May. Was it May? Last year, yeah. It felt like March because it's Duluth, <laughs> yeah. Minnesota, but it was May. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to meet each other there and they run a, a sauna company out in Utah that we'll get into um, later on in the episode. 
So it's good to have you guys here with us. Yeah, yeah. Sean, Laura, thank you for coming. Uh, welcome. Thanks for having us. So I'd like to start maybe just lay out that background information that I talked about or alluded to earlier, how I got interested in sauna in Utah. Um, it started during COVID. We were in Rochester. We just moved back to Rochester. And I connected with some LDS Latter-day Saint missionaries on the internet. And so we were just chatting about theology and stuff back and forth. And it was during the middle of winter and they were in Wisconsin. And then I told them like, you know, cause they're from Utah. I asked like, how do you guys handle winter in Utah? How are you doing with the Minnesota winter? And I said, you know, how, how our family deals with it is we go out in swimsuits and we sauna during the winter. And I think he thought that was a little crazy. Um, but I said, Hey, if you're ever in Rochester, like stop by, I'd love to meet you. And, um, and then I can show you our sauna. And eventually, um, I don't know if you know this, but LDS missionaries are transferred or they can be every six weeks. So they cover a lot of ground, a lot of territory. And he would, him and his partner ended up in Rochester and reached out. So I just want to shout out them if they listen to this episode of Shandon Lindquist and Ike Niederhauser. And so they stopped by and we met and I showed him this crazy shed like thing with the stove in our backyard. And I said, Hey, if you want to, you're welcome to come use it anytime. And they were intrigued. It was summertime then. And, um, and so they eventually said, yeah, we'd like to come check it out. And they had one, uh, like a rest day or a preparation day a week. And they said, we'll come on our preparation day and see what it's about. And so I had this opportunity to introduce sauna to them and um, teach them what it was all about. I bought bags of ice from Costco and filled up our cold plunge. And then like, just, you know, it was, it was quite the privilege to like bring them in, hear about their life story, and then just expose them to that first steam and watch them, you know, I kind of cower. It's like, it's 200 in here, you know, yeah. but they, you know, all you'll, you'll find probably that all LDS missionaries are like great sports. They're very adventurous, very open to learning about the culture um, that they've traveled to and, um, and they fell in love with it. And so I invited them back next week and they were like, can we, there's two other missionaries in town we'd like to invite, you know, can we have them come too?" I was like, sure. You know, so we, then we sounded with the four of us and we'd have grapes and food afterwards and just sit and chat and arrow. We did, you'd be proud of us. We did multiple rounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so I tried to teach them as best that I knew how, you know, they're like my sauna disciples. <laughs> then a few weeks later, they're like, there's two more missionaries in town <laughs> and they're, they're kind of the leaders in our area. We haven't told them we're doing this. So pretend it's our first time. And so then now it was six <laughs> and we just did that week after week. Um, and so these are my friends in Utah that they went back home. And I was like, I got to try and help them find a sauna back in their home state. Um, so that's, that's kind of like the, the quick version of how I got interested in sauna in Utah. Very cool. Yeah. And I'm sure those missionaries were so grateful <laughs> to do. So Sean was a, a missionary in Honduras and they, he did not have the opportunity to sauna in, in Honduras, <laughs> unfortunately, but not, not so much. Yeah, yeah. Not so much. Well, the Honduras. whole thing was a sauna really. That's true. I, yeah. I, I think it's hilarious how they expected to, uh, you know, to proselytize to you, but really you were proselytizing the, uh, the theology of sauna to them. So mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, there's church and then there's sauna church. Yeah. 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 And I didn't convert, but I mean, I did learn a lot. I have, you know, since then learned, um, a yeah. lot about the LDS church. It's been a cool experience for me to, to kind of inform myself, um, but I, I would say that I think I probably made, it's been like either 16 or 17 converts. And there's even a few of them that are planning on building their own one of these days. So, oh, yeah. so I hope one of these days to travel out to Utah and use a sauna that one of my disciples has built. 
and come uh, to us too. We want you to, we'd love to host you as well. So that would, that would be awesome. Yeah. And um, so in my sauna searches in Utah, I've got just a few bullet points and I'll just, I'll bring them up and then you guys can kind of comment on, on each of these. Um, uh, there was a video. I don't know, Sam and Arrow, if I've ever sent this to you. Did I ever send you the video of the three guys saunaing like in the locker room? It's called the sauna experience. I'm not sure, no. So no. if our viewers or listeners haven't seen this video, we'll put it in the show notes. You guys all should totally watch that video. I stumbled upon it early in our sauna journey, and it, even though it's not wood fired and it's not outside, it's not like an idyllic sauna, it captures like the heart and soul of sauna really well. And I found out later that these guys were using the staff sauna, the faculty sauna at BYU, and that's where this is filmed. So at Brigham Young University in Utah, the LDS church, I think sent out missionaries pretty early in their history to the Nordic lands like Sweden. Um, I don't know if it was Norway and Finland too, yep. but yep. it was. As there, well. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So my, my family history is Scandinavian. So my, my family's, uh, my, my ancestors come from Norway and Denmark. Um, and so, uh, that's, so yes, if you're, if you were to trace it with, you know, church related and, and missionary work, um, uh, many, obviously we didn't, you know, it, there, there were people coming over from, uh, other countries and coming to Utah and settling the pioneers, all of that. And so, but yeah, my, my history is very Scandinavian in that. And, and in fact, our, our partners, uh, with plunge, uh, which is our business name, uh, with our business, uh, one of our partners in particular, she has her family history is Scandinavian too. And in her family history journals, my family's names are listed. So they were friends um, through anyways. And we didn't obviously know that when we first met them, but as we kind of were looking through our histories, we we went to Norway a couple of years ago and they're going this year. And, and we were doing some family search and looking into our ancestors and we're able to find our connection through um our ancestors even so there's the sauna and the cold plunge aspect but actually our our ancestors were were very close so all coming through norway and denmark that's uh that's fascinating yeah i, I was actually i was at the uh at the um the finnish independence independence day is on the 6th of december and i was at this party and i met the uh, the consul general of denmark and i told her that I am Finnish, Swedish, Norwegian, but not Danish at all. So no, there, there's go, there goes the line. But yeah. that Utah, Utah connection is new to me. I did not know that. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Lots of people would immigrate. They they uh, would meet with the missionaries. They wanted to be part of uh, the growing church and and all the other uh, members, and so they would immigrate here and then would uh, they found themselves in utah so there's lots of lots of scandinavian influence here for sure yeah that i don't know if you remember that missionary's name i mentioned shandon lindquist so i think that's a swedish last name yeah lindquist yes correct yes yeah um, yeah and actually he traveled back out with his parents uh, a few months ago and so we had the the opportunity to introduce his parents to sauna as well. And they loved it. Oh, cool. Great. Yeah. So is that, um, is that I'm, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but is that, is that like in Utah, is that's the same thing as everywhere. So, so the Scandinavia, so the Nordic people brought the sauna with them. Is that, is that the same thing? Or was it like the, the missionaries who did that? Or how, how do you know, how did that, how, how did, did it go? So it feels like I, so I think I'm wrong with it. I don't know if sauna completely made it here. So that's that's why there's this new emergence of it, right? Where I'm sure that the Scandinavian people who are here and, and from other countries were doing it in their own way. We have a neighbor down the road who he's from, um, oh, where's Peter from? Peter's from Denmark, but Denmark. we also have a next door neighbor who's from Finland. And there's there's pockets of sauna that have been happening all over. And in fact, like, you know, 
it, yeah. you sent me some articles just a, a few days back, and those are the first times that I had seen kind of historical depictions of Nordic culture and sauna culture and stuff like that. So that was very interesting to me. Um, but from a from kind of a mass standpoint, it doesn't exist like it exists, you know, kind of where a lot of the immigrants came over from uh, those those countries in the first place, like Minnesota and you know, kind of up in that area. It doesn't exist here yet in in kind of that same fashion. That's yeah, one of our missions. <laughs> it was really great when we went to sauna days last year to see. You know, it was obviously part of the culture. It was you know palpable. On um, we went to a conference, you know, where it was all about sauna and, and cold plunging, right? And so everyone's into it, but it was still very obvious just being there for the short time we were that it's a very uh, culture rich uh, sauna group out there that uh, as people come and, and as, as that has been shared and, and as the tradition is carried on, it's in Utah, but not, I would say it's much more, uh, you'd find people doing it in their own homes here and there, but not something that was widespread. So like Sean said, it's something that we're trying to change and help people understand how important it is and just the, the rich history around it. And, and, and um, yeah, want to bring that to everybody. So, well, and I mean, you do have, you, you know, there's gyms and, and places out here that would have saunas in there, but, you know, nothing like we you know sauna to be, you know, traditionally. And that's what we're really trying to, to kind of hopefully bring back and uncover from from some of its from some of that the, those immigrants' roots, you know what I mean? The, that 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 uh, we talk a lot of we talk a lot about gym saunas and uh, and I I, I guess it, you know it, I, of course they vary so it's like not you know they they can be they can be some kind they can be different kind but but you can also you know uh, of some of them you can call them saunas saunas in name only. Yeah. So it, it it's like you know it it uh, and uh, very germ rich <laughs> environments and and whatnot. But but that's let's not talk about those. Let's talk about the real saunas here today. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So we're just we're very excited to be part of it. And we've we've known too. You know we we understand we're not an actual Finnish sauna or you know it's there's there's aspects of who we are that is specific to you know. The United States or Utah or just us and it right there's a lot of Scandinavian influence but we understand it's a it's a culture that we completely we didn't grow up doing sauna right this is something we've discovered as we've kind of in our own journeys and so we do our best to honor the tradition of sauna uh obviously we're sauna I, I'm not used to sauna uh we're trying our very best to make sure that our customers and our hosts who work at Plunge uh, understand what that rich history is and we can share that with everyone who comes yeah. through our door. And we're trying our best to capture it, you know, yeah. it's a process and that's why we love um, having these types of conversations because every conversation like this helps us kind of know and understand a little bit more about the tradition and about other people's experiences and how other people use it. Yep. I would not be too shy about that because I, th I think it's a learning process for all of us. Yeah. It, it, it's it's like you know it's like you know we you know back home obviously you know it, it's not a secret that my funny accent comes from Finland, and uh, and and you know we used to be like you know the sauna was like a super rich thing you know back, way back in the day but but then it sort of died, and uh, and uh, but it, you know it's uh, obviously the drop was not that big because considering that there are 3.5 million saunas they say with 5.6 million people yeah. so there are still a lot of sounds but not all of them are perfect so it, it's 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 a learning process and we are we are learning together and and kind of you know we obviously we as people we try to push that movement in you know and make a difference so there are saunas and then there are saunas and uh, and that's how it goes and and I mean we have to make very clear what the difference is between those anyways but that's that's interesting and if anyone's watching i just i'm mindful that i keep looking over here i have a newborn right here so <laughs> trying to <laughs> quite all right I'm happy so i it's not that i'm not engaged or listening it's that i'm <laughs> i'm trying to make sure he stays happy so hey that, we, that family comes first yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll get him in the sauna soon enough so <laughs> Yeah, that'll be exciting. Our youngest 
you know, like I didn't grow up with it either. So I'm still learning. Um, but our youngest, they don't remember a time before sauna, you know, it's always been part of their life. Yeah. So. That's amazing. Be yeah, great. It's been a little bit different where our first introduction had actually started with the cold, right? And so our oldest is actually probably more familiar with the cold water. Uh, and we're trying to introduce her more into sauna. She she tends to already run very hot. <laughs> <laughs> and so she, I think, likes the cold more, just it feels better for her. But we're getting there. She's had a few sauna sessions and she she's getting there. So what would you say is the biggest like hesitation to new users, the sauna or the cold plunge? The cold. The cold, for yeah. sure. Yeah. A majority of people want to come in and just use the sauna. And, and some people do. Most of the time, they will end up using the cold as well, just because they see other people doing it. And, you know, once you've been in a 190 degree room for, you know, 15 minutes, the cold doesn't sound too bad. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, majority of the time, that when there's when there's a couple that comes in, you can always tell who wants to be there and who doesn't. And most of the time, the person who doesn't doesn't want to be there for the cold. So, sure. yeah. And then they always sure. come back. That's, that's <laughs> the crazy thing, right? And you guys know that you have people who are very nervous and hesitant, and they do it and realize how great they feel and how amazing the experience was, and they always come back. Uh, it's and they bring other people like, oh, you'll never believe that sitting in this hot sauna and this cold, this cold, cold water felt amazing. I've never felt more relaxed. You gotta come, right? And so that's I, I think the word of mouth is is pretty eminent and hard to. I mean, you you can't not talk about it. <laughs> I mean, if you've, been on, if you've been on social media for two minutes, you've already seen every other post is about uh, someone doing a cold plunge or or being in the sauna. So. That, well, and you, you, yeah, you were early to that cold plunge trend, right? Like how many years ago? Uh, 2018. Yeah. 2018 was when I, when I, I first started to utilize the cold again, just for after like post-workout recovery. So I remember doing it after football practices and, and uh, I started to use it again and we realized it was helping physical recovery, but also Mental. with my anxiety and Lauren's insomnia and and then uh, one thing led to another and we decided that, oh, it was through a book called The Finish Way, actually, that we came in contact with what, how the Finns would use the cold plunge in conjunction with the sauna. And so we, uh, we decided that we wanted to start trying to, to, to figure well, it out. Well, and to dive into that a little bit more, it was, you know, we had, we had done sauna on our own. We'd done the cold now. We'd been doing that at home and in the river uh but we hadn't combined the two and you know looking for something like that we just you know we'd been reading the finish way and i thought oh my gosh we, we need this here where is it where is this you know they're all over finland where is it here it's got to be here and you know did a quick google search and the only places you could go were pretty high-end hotels you know you're paying upwards 300 to 500 just to even have access to the spa and it wasn't what we were looking for. And, and Sean will tell, like, he's, Sean is my business idea guy. And we've known each other a very, very, we're, we're high school, met in high school. And, and um, anyways, there's always been a business, even through high school, there's always been a business idea. And this is the one we've been reading the finish way. And we just sort of thought, oh my gosh, we could do this. You know, we were hosting people in our backyard. <laughs> And we're doing tea and food, and and we had our a cattle trough that we were plunging in, and and uh, just thought, you know, this really is helping people, and people are asking about it, and it's helping us so much that we want to share this. This is something that should be accessible. It shouldn't cost a premium just to have access to it. And so that's we 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 came into it very to so to answer your question we came into it very genuinely very authentically organically it was just something that we found that was helping us in so many ways and wanted to share it isn't isn't that um the finnish way isn't that book by katya panzer uh -huh. yep. yep yeah yeah i've 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 met her i've met oh, her oh you have 
Yeah, and I, I have the books here somewhere. My my home office is a mess, so I'm not trying to find it now. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And yeah. and it, it's it's kind of interesting because as, if I recall right, uh Katya uh grew up in Canada. Yeah. And she did yeah, then she moved to Finland and then she started like a little bit of the same process as with you guys. She started thinking that that uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that that's awesome. That's awesome. If I get to talk to her, I'll tell that that she's a big time influencer. So that's well, if if you talk to her, we want to yeah, her. give her our email because we would love to tell her thank you and just chat with her about her book because we both read it a few times and we sell it. Absolutely that love it. So <laughs> yeah, we try to promote it. It was part of our. We had a little uh, like a, a what did we call it? Our our Christmas. The holiday package yeah we sold it as part of the little holiday bundle in our business and bundle. a lot of people got that and i'd just say for anybody listening if they want a really accessible it's look into finnish short, culture easy. it's very well written and and very entertaining so yeah we book. loved it it's, it's we'll leave a link it, to that yeah it, it's it's up to it's kind of interesting because it's up to a point you know um i've I I don't I'm not a rich person obviously I'm doing these podcasts so it means that there's not a whole lot of money involved in our lives but but the, but the thing is that um that we do still have an apartment in Helsinki and that's actually on the same island where Katya apparently lives and and it's kind of a crazy thing I've been away from home for 26 years now and they have the there are this this bunch of cold swimmers and they go there like you know no matter how cold it is outside they go and they they you know they get their cold you know punch punches in the cold and it's just like i shiver when i see these people <laughs> you know, it's like I, I can easily do it you know after sauna but like you said you know it's like 190 degrees for 50 minutes straight and then you go and go fast yeah and you're yeah. fine yeah <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Yeah, that's that's next on our travel list is is to go over to Finland. So hopefully we're going to make that happen soon. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope so too. I'm probably going to there's uh, the the World Sauna Forum is going to take place in June. Yeah. Uh, oh. And uh, and I uh, we we might all go actually. You know, we're oh, still cool. talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, I tell I tell people um you know when I'm introducing them for the first time, the heat is easier than the cold you're gonna find yourself friends with the heat pretty quickly it might take a session or two um but i can see people like visibly relax into the heat maybe the second or third round but the cold that that that's one that takes a little bit longer to become a friend with but eventually that friendship that you develop with the cold ends up maybe even being the stronger one so like for me right now i I engage with the cold more than I do with the heat. You know, we may be sauna once a week, but I cold plunge every morning. You know, I cold plunge this morning in the stock tank, just break through the ice on the top and, you know, I'm hanging out in the cold. So it's interesting how that kind of progression happens. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. In fact, um, I, we had to, um, we were doing a remodel in our business and we're uh, closed for quite a few months. And so, during my pregnancy, I wasn't able to uh, sauna near as much as, as I probably was hoping I would be able to, uh, but I cold plunged a lot. And I attribute that to my, I have the best labor and delivery. I had, you know, it was just a very, very good experience overall. And I attribute that to the cold, uh, my experience in the cold. So I wish I could have added the sauna. I think it would have even made it that much better, uh, but we didn't have as much access to the sauna uh, during the majority of my pregnancy, but yeah, it's, it's amazing putting the two together just really makes sense. So do you guys ever, I, you know, this is always something that I've always wanted to ask somebody in the, the cold plunge community. Is there more of a, you know, are you seeing kind of this cold plunge culture emerge and is it segmenting out anywhere like the homegrown DIY guys, like you said, you started off in a stock tank, you know, that you probably got a tractor supply, but now I can go spend 10 grand and get a beautiful, cool, chilled, you know, all in one unit and everything in between. Are you seeing like some division or maybe even some infighting? I mean, you guys probably know how we feel about infrared. 
Um, <laughs> do you guys ever feel that way about the, you know, the crazy stock tank people now or, or, you know, what, how does that work? We are a crazy stock tank person still. <laughs> so we still have that in our backyard. <laughs> we have a facility, but yeah. it's, it honestly depends. I would say you'd have to split it between commercial use and personal use. Um, and that's where there's a lot of confusion. Is that the right word still? Well, what I'm understanding, just trying to figure out what goes where. Yeah. Well, what, what I would say is that, you know, we, we don't ever have any problem with anybody trying to do this on their own, no matter how they do it. Right. Whether they're buying it from, you know, an online place and getting their own stuff at their house, or if they're doing a stock tank pool. I think the division that I've seen the most kind of from being in the industry of contrast therapy lately is that in reality, it's it's so new. It's the Wild West. A lot of jurisdictions don't know how to regulate a location like ours. And there's a lot of people that will start. Um, and, you know, us included, when we first started um, with what we kind of feel is the wrong equipment. Um, and, you know, what we're worried about is that as this becomes more prevalent and people start to want to start their own locations, they'll start locations with equipment that isn't up to the task of being able to keep um, the water clean and, and sanitary. And we just don't want that to, to damage the relationship that people could have with a quality bathhouse. And so that's, that's kind of what we've seen so far is that people may want to start a bathhouse with a, with a cheaper off the shelf um, cold plunge unit that and for residential use is phenomenal, but for the use in a commercial aspect just doesn't quite do the job. And as painful as it was to kind of shut down for the months that we had to for the health department, in reality, in retrospect, it was the only option because it it, it has just raised the level of of quality and uh, the the product that we're able to present to our customers um, and how efficient we can be as well. So, anyways, that's that's probably one of the only divisions that I've seen so far. Yeah, you're you're paving the road for other people. You know, you're at that forefront of when it's just taking off. There's not many people in your shoes in the U.S. You know, I can only think of like a handful at the most um, that are trying to do it at a commercial level and do it right. You know, what yeah. what if someone's interested in getting into that? What are some things that should be on their radar so that they don't you know hit some of those pits? So some of the pits in terms of just of the, the cold plunge, I think. And yeah, of I think the biggest thing is you have to immediately before you even, you know, before you've signed your lease, before you uh, really started planning your business out as in its entirety, you need to work with your local government, your um, on the state side on, you know, just just your local, you know, your county. Um, and really figure out what the code is for cold plunge because most, sorry, we have a chatter over here. Mm -hmm. um, most states don't have a very defined bathhouse or cold plunge. Uh, they don't have guidelines around it. And so we're working to actually, we're, we're hoping to work with government, at least in Utah for now to help essentially write that code or at least be part of the revision or the the review of that code uh, because you know these these groups who do want to start and and we totally get the entrepreneur spirit we get that this is something that is so special for so many people especially you know with contrast therapy and so we understand that there's just a lot more that goes into it than just and i think people get a little bit maybe misguided because they come into a space like ours and it's very simple you know there's one person working at a time usually um it's just hot cold rest repeat is our regimen that we say and you go in and it's very simplistic and it's very relaxing and there's not a lot to it right not a lot of overhead and so i think in the forefront it looks like a pretty simple business uh, but the background of it is actually quite complex um, in order for us to bring that customer experience uh, to our guests. So I think that's the biggest thing is to make sure you really understand uh, not only the cost of that, 
um, because we surely we we say that we've spent a lot of dumb tax <laughs> over the last while because you know we didn't know what we didn't know and there wasn't a lot of resources out there to help guide us and so we've learned I we could write an entire series of books on what we've learned at this point. And so I think that's one of the biggest things is really understanding the depth of what people are getting into and not just being, uh, I guess, entranced almost by the simplicity of what it is when you, in terms of the practice, if that makes sense. People usually don't believe me when I tell them that in order to go through the health compliancy process, you know, not even not even looking at the cost of your commercial cold plunge pools, you're going to probably be 20 grand in just getting your engineer fees and design fees and all of that up front before you can even think about getting your your cold plunge, right? And so that's, and each jurisdiction is different. That's why Lauren was saying, you know, dig into that. If uh, people really want to, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, avoid those pitfalls, uh, just contact us for a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> so we are a franchise model where we're opening uh locations uh hopefully across the u.s is the plan and and we in fact ended up uh designing building constructing our own cold plunge tub um that meets those regulations and so it's something that you know with our future owners um, and current owners um that this is a tub that we know will work um, there may be some tweaks here and there, depending on the state, but for the most part, this is a code compliant tub. And in order for us to get to that point was a lot of time, a lot of money, um, a lot of mistakes. Uh, we'll still probably have, like I said, there's always going to be some revisions, um, but it's something that we're very proud of now. And our guests, it really has elevated our customer experience to the next level. Um, a lot of the bottlenecks that we had before are now gone because of this this new design. Um, so yeah, it's it's I guess that's the overall is just really dig into it and really understand. I think too, we just didn't know. We hoped that people would like it, <laughs> but we didn't have anyone to really compare to. And so we opened this business, and people thought not everyone, but I'm sure people just thought we were crazy. You know, you're gonna have people come and sit in this cold tub and this hot sauna, and you, okay, good luck. <laughs> and you know, we were so grateful and so, to be honest, kind of shocked that we had so many people come. And because of that volume and the amount of people who want to be part of this and who have found so much healing and community with it, you have to have equipment that can keep up with that demand, right? So. That's a very long. That's a very long answer to that question, but you can tell that it's it's been a big part of the last two years for us, two and a half years for us. That that sounds excellent. Hey, I, I want to go back to that cold element. Um, so, did I hear right that there's a river or a lake somewhere close by? What, yeah. Is it, so is that is that is that commercial or that is that your home where you have that river? Is that is or is the same thing? So where where you are running your business next to the river, or is your home next to the river? No, so we 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 live just like a mile away from the river, and we'll we'll go down there and utilize the river. Um, uh, real estate in and around the river where we live is, especially from a commercial standpoint, there's just not a lot of it. And okay, residentially, it's it's very expensive right around the river. So we just go use the public places. Our business. Um, has you know our own little proprietary cold plunge pool that we've built. Yeah, yeah. But I know I understand. Yeah, because I'm I'm just going back to the, you know, the the the, the uh, like the early days of sauna because like you know what I got what I was used to when I was a kid. So there was a sauna, there was a jetty, and there was water. Yeah, and, uh, and you don't control you don't control the 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 you know the the temperature of the water. So, yeah. so and hence the holes in the ice because you still want to go swimming when there's an ice cover. You just you know, dig a hole and then you go in and you go, you know, a little faster up than you don't normally do. But, but, <laughs> but yeah, but that's yeah. exactly it. And it's all about that contrast, contrast heat therapy, obviously, as you know so well. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we were in Minnesota and we had a thousand lakes and rivers, but 
we're we're still the desert over here so <laughs> well you might might be doing better than where i'm at in minnesota we have no natural lakes in our county so yeah. Um, oh yeah i suppose yeah um yeah. what and and also like utah is probably nice in the winter because not everything freezes over so you have nice cold water without it being quite so difficult to get into um yeah. the higher you go the the harder it is we've definitely mm. had to cut through ice in some places but you can usually find a river and yeah there's there's usually access somewhere it's just not as accessible depending what's on yeah what's your for each of you if you could just set the water temperature to exactly what you like for cold plunge it's kind of a geeky question but what's your ideal cold plunge water temperature 50 degrees for i'm me. gonna say 50 for me too yeah, and that, I know a lot of like hardcore Wim Hoffers will be like, no, it needs to be a lot colder. And I, I totally get why, you know, from a mental aspect and training your kind of the mental scape of the cold, uh, I totally understand why a lot of people feel that way. For me, I feel like I get the most out of it when I can do it on a regular basis every single day and I can spend, you know, some some considerable time in it. And 50 degrees for me is uncomfortable. It puts me into that kind of stressed state, but I can still spend a little bit of a time and it's not hard for me to come back to. I know exactly, you know, what to expect and I still feel like I get a lot of the benefit. So, you know, I, I feel like there's, there is still definite benefit to colder than 50 degrees, uh, but that's kind of where, where we like to hover. Yeah, I'm at 50 as well. I was gonna say the same thing. For, for how long? Usually, yeah. usually, I rarely go over five minutes. Uh, I'm usually in the realm of three to five. That's kind of, and usually when I'm at plunge, I'll, you know, do that twice during my session. I'll do a really quick dip into the sauna, out for three to five minutes in the sauna, and then, you know, a three to five minute dip again, or sometimes only one or two of those rounds, just depending on how I'm feeling. I've actually changed the way I time it. Um, I don't wear a watch either. I'm a, I'm the weird one who I just, I don't like things on my wrist. <laughs> so I, when I'm cold plunging, I, when I was pregnant uh, and I would plunge, it became more about my breath count than it did the time. And so it was, you know, there were some days that I could only make it 10 breaths, right? Uh, but there was other days that I would go 50 breaths or more, you know? It just, I, I kind of changed, it helped change my mindset, I guess, that it wasn't necessarily a time I was going for. It was more internally thinking about my body. Um, a lot of that was preparation for labor and delivery because you can't just look at a clock, right? And be like, okay, three minutes, the baby's going to come out, you know? And so it was uh, purposely helping me kind of get away from the time a little bit more and just focus on me. If that makes sense. That that makes total sense, and and that this is this is kind of a thing. There's a there's kind of a difference, like when we go to Europe, to to the approaches of the hot and cold, because like in Germany, as far as I can tell, they're like clocking. You know, they have this this they they like clock everything. Back home, where I come from, you don't clock anything. Your body tells you everything. So it's just like you don't you don't you don't decide beforehand how many rounds you're gonna do. You don't decide how long you're gonna stay, either on hot or cold. It's just your body telling you that. So, yeah. so that that that's really you know that's the same thing with me. That's my approach. Yeah, and we've tried to say the plunge. Right? I mentioned it's hot, cold, rest, repeat. You come in and you see this listed and in, in the space, and we try to tell people it doesn't mean that you have to get three rounds in or two rounds in or you know, it's really up to you and how you want to do it. And I think the more people expose themselves to it and the more sessions they do the more they realize oh this is how i can customize it to me and like where sean said you know he doesn't really go above that five minute mark but it depends on your body too at the time and how you're feeling mentally and so we try to encourage that more so we've had a lot of people request to put you know those swimmer um clocks, clocks. Yeah. um a lot of people wanted us to put that in our location specifically, and we keep saying no. <laughs> just yeah. We don't want the time to be such a big driving factor. Driving factor. Yeah. Not yeah, but... that it's bad too. I, we, we know of other places that do, and that's just fine. That's just a choice that we made for our location. But 
Well, I think the last thing as a business owner you would want is a couple of guys back there going, I can beat that. I can beat that. Oh, they still do. We've had that a lot. <laughs> we've, we've, had, we've had our hosts go back there and some guys like sitting in the, we used to have two different temperatures and there's a guy sitting in the 40 degree one for 25 minutes shivering. And we're like, okay, no, that's, it's like, it's you're going nice. to kill yourself. You can't yeah. get out. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, and, and that begs the question. I mean, would it be, wouldn't it be possible to do a salt water plunge that was below 32 degrees? Yeah, so <laughs> I have a funny story about that. When I was uh, when I was looking at different plunges to use in version one of of our business, um, I went out and toured a lot of different uh, cold plunge builders. And when I was doing it, there weren't a lot out there. There were only two or three that were kind of building them for for the use that I felt like we could do. That weren't like you know uh, professional pool builders. And uh, I went out to Michigan and toured one out there. Then there's one out in California. The one I went out to in California. Uh, Renew Therapy, which just want to shout them out. They have a really good commercial, I mean, not commercial, uh, residential use, uh, I you know, product. It's phenomenal. But anyways, I went out there and I chatted with the owner. He was showing me how they're built. And he told me to bring my suit because we were going to do a little cold plunge. I'm like, oh, great. So he had two of them running and he's like, hey, you go ahead and use this one and I'll go ahead and use this one. And let's, you know, let's just try and sit for three minutes. I'm like, oh, three minutes. That's not a big deal at all. Well, I get in and immediately I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is beyond anything that I've ever done before. And part of me was thinking like, is it the elevation? Is my body just not prepped? Like what is going on? And I ended up having to get out at like a minute 30. And uh, he's like, oh, that was, that was good. And he was kind of laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? And he's like, well, I have that running through two chillers and it is extremely salinated. So that's running like well below, you know, the freezing point. And, and he's like, so congratulations. You know what it felt like for the uh, people that uh, had to jump out of the Titanic. And it was, it was so cold. It, it, like usually after a minute, you know, your whole body kind of goes numb even in really cold ones, but this just, this just hurt and it <laughs> continued to hurt. Yeah. That, that's doing the polar bear plunge. That's cutting a hole in the lake and, and jumping in. Yeah. That's yeah. chilly, but very cool. I mean, I mean, the science is there. I, you know, in the back of my head, I was like, I remember making ice cream in like sixth grade science class by packing a coffee can full of ice and salt. And then you take a little quart jar of, of cream and then you roll it around. And it was like, eh, OK, it makes sense. But yeah, I, I figured somebody somebody out there is probably trying to get that 30 degree mark or whatever it is. Well, and that's another thing going back to code and regulation, like our health department will not let us go below 50 degrees. Sure. Um, there are other codes and other regulatory bodies might allow you to go lower, but that's another one of those things to be conscious of as you're trying to look and do this yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we should tell our listeners, um, that you do need to listen to your body. Um, you know, the extreme hot and the extreme cold can be dangerous. So, you know, you should consult with your doctor Although keep in mind that most American doctors don't understand sauna mm -hmm. at all. So, you know, you do have to do your homework, but um, just on a personal note, um, sauna and cold plunge, like tried to kill me this past year. I had an acute hypertensive incident after doing cold plunge, you know, like extreme heat and then cold. And it was pretty cold. It was probably in the upper thirties, I would guess. Oh, yeah. 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 Or mid thirties even. And um, we were chat had friends over and I was chatting a long time, just hanging out in the cold plunge. And then um, I got the sauna spins afterwards and then it just wouldn't stop. And I started oh, feeling like I was going to die. I said, you know, so like I went inside, got like warm things on me. And, you know, my wife's a nurse. So Julie checked me out. And um, but you do have to be careful you know, with how your physiology reacts. And now, now I just take it a little bit easier with the cold, yeah. um, especially yeah. if I've done a hot sauna, it right. seems like the combination of those two things can trigger it for me. Yeah. Well, and, and something else that we talk about a lot on this show too, is maybe having a, you know, a snack or maybe an adult beverage in your sauna. Yeah. If you're, uh, if you're drinking alcohol or consuming any sort of uh, chemicals in your body, um, maybe think twice before going hot, cold, hot, cold, and then, you know, slamming a couple of beers or smoking <laughs> something on top of it. Yeah. So sure. yeah, use your better judgment, people. Yeah. We've told people there's a, then another Scandinavian term called the gom. 
uh, Errol, maybe you've heard of, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's, it's basically balance, right? So it's, it's not too much. It's not too little. It's, it's enough is yeah. how it would be translated. Right. And that's how we've tried to explain contrast therapy to people is that, you know, you come and oftentimes people come very competitive, right? Either you're scared or you're competitive. One of the ways people come is they're competitive. And we've had to explain, even for the people who are nervous, you know, it's, you don't need to go to these extreme lengths, you know, temperature wise or duration wise uh, to get the benefits of it and to get the, you know, all the chemical release. And, you know, we can get into all the science behind it, uh, but just to have that experience, it's, it is legal, it's enough. And, and enough is, is on both sides, but like I said, with the, the timing and, and the heat and the cold, it doesn't have to be extreme. So, and I'm sorry you had such a bad, I'm glad your wife was there. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's just, you know, getting older, I'm not in the best shape. Like, I mean, people should pay attention to their body. Um, it's, it's just a good reminder of that. Um, I think people forget too, that, that what you're doing is very akin to a really stressful workout. You're putting mm -hmm. your heart through the same sort of situation as you would in like is if you were circuit training, right? You're you're getting your heart rate super high in the sauna and then you go into the cold plunge and it drops super low. And then, you know, that's also why we tell people the rest. It's really important to kind of come back to a to a regular heart rate sure. or subjecting yourself back into the heat. Um, so yeah, all of that is, it's really important. And we, we try and dive into that a lot at plunge just to kind of listen to yourself and, and understand that, you know, the only, you're, you're not competing with anybody. You're, you're looking to feel better and that's the overall goal. And I, I was just going to say that, that, you know, so this is my sauna evening today, this evening, and it's, it's, I'm in New York state, New York city or in the suburbs of New York City, and it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit as we speak. I'm just watching my computer here. And my cold plunge is most, of, for the most part, is going to be, I'm just sitting outside. So yeah. that's yeah. 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 just perfect, actually. Yeah. Hey, guys, we're on our last five minutes, and we haven't even touched surface yet. yet. <laughs> so, uh, so how are we going to out there? Here's the baby. The baby. sound well I, yeah i'd like to hear a little bit about your future plans and then i have i'd promised a unique sauna that i want to show you all that's in utah um, yeah. but what are, what are your plans with plunge yeah i'll give you a quick one minute recap we uh we have started franchising we've sold up to this point 11 uh territory locations our goal is to have 10 of them up and running or at least under construction by the end of this year um, we currently have one under construction with two more um, getting ready to go under construction in the next few weeks. And also um, we have opened, we have, so we have two fully functioning locations. I don't know if that's yeah. been communicated. So two are open. Yeah. So those are, those are kind of our overall plans and we're looking to continue to, to grow and expand over the next five years. We really want to have around 50 locations and that's kind of our, our goal that we're pushing towards. Um, so if anybody's listening to this and wants to reach out, feel free. I would love to have a phone call and, and chat a little bit about that. Especially outside of Utah. If you're yes. outside of Utah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, I, I can get you out here. <laughs> yeah, let's, go. let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Now, let me see if I can figure out how to share my screen yeah, so, here. So a little bit for the audience. So, so Risto, you know, has got a great eye for vintage history you know great old saunas that really represent the the time frame in which they came from and i'm excited here i, I every time risto pulls up a sauna i get excited um just to see what is going on and and <laughs> and in true risto fashion he does not disappoint oh my gosh. <laughs> this is in utah yeah so it is let's see i'm gonna find these people do you just see this one window it said it was in cottonwood canyon uh yeah um is it full canyons yeah and then here's the here's the inside and you oh, that's amazing can you rent it or is it just someone's well i think this is an older picture okay. um i think they had i think you maybe could stay there with some sort of yeah, ranch that... i'd have to dig through my notes again but I'm pretty um... sure that yeah that volkswagen isn't moving yeah, yeah. <laughs> not for where those tires are, that's for sure. I was just going to say, Risto, you have to explain for our, for our listeners what we are looking at, because not all people are going to see. Oh, yeah. Our audio listeners, 
Um, it's a it's an old Volkswagen uh, camper van that's been painted with uh, Grateful Dead stuff. Is that right? Yeah, it's like that classic mural, you know, late, you know, late 60s, early 70s mural van. And this thing, they converted it. I mean, it looks like they literally picked it up and just put it in their garden. But they converted a, a, a Volkswagen van into a sauna. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And look, and and if I'm not mistaken, that is an old polar heater. Yeah, I don't know. Are there rocks in there? It's hard to tell. Well, there's a bucket yeah. with a ladle, so there must be rocks. Yeah, I, I think there's some rocks. I think there are some rocks in there too. Yeah, it yeah. looks like an old polar heater. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's there's probably some hidden gems of sauna in Utah. Um, that town we mentioned uh, was that old Finnish mining town. If anyone wants to do any field trips, but it's Schofield, Utah which is uh, southeast of Provo. Um, and so there might be still some Finnish saunas in use there or um, some old. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to go check that out. That it's about a half where we're at. Very cool. Nice. So let's start wrapping this up. It, it's, um, it's such a pleasure to talk to people who understand uh, the real thing and convey the message because we've been so lacking that stuff here in North America for so long, but uh, but there's there's clearly there's clearly a great movement going on right now, and and I personally I am flying uh, uh, Thursday next week to uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, to talk about saunas. So uh, you know you don't need that chill factor there. It's going to be cold, so it's. Uh, It'll be even colder the hot air than here in New York. Yeah. But anyway, so on my behalf, thank you so much for coming to the show and and good luck. I'm sure that, that we're gonna see you guys again and uh and maybe share a sound with that little dude there one of these days. Yeah, we'll, get him. we'll do yeah. it. We'll do it. <laughs> Awesome. Thank thank you guys so much. And to everybody listening, um, we're going to have some links down below to everything we talked about today, um, to the business, to the books, to the to the fun stuff. Um, maybe we can even get that van photo up on our social medias um, and make sure that everybody gets access to take a look at that because that was pretty neat. But you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you need anything from the East Coast, let us, you know, Arrow or myself know. Um, Risto, Minnesota is all you, bud. Yeah, and if you want to dive deeper into the history, um, our family started a sauna podcast called The Sauna Trail, and I'm currently in the throes of editing uh, an episode on sauna history in North America. So where I dive deeper into what happened to sauna, you know, how is it that you had immigrants come over to Utah and maybe even some other places, and then it kind of just all went away. So I, I dive into that in that episode. Very cool. Check it out, guys. All right. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.